You can do however much personal development, you can do however much therapy, talk therapy, you can keep exploring your patterns and you can do whatever the heck you want. But if you don't go directly to connect with your yoni, your femininity will never be complete. You will never completely understand what this woman's body is made of and what it is capable of and what it actually is here for. Hello, gorgeous humans. So I'm live to talk about something that has been a really, really significant part of my path. So I'm welcoming you into this space with me. As you are connecting, I invite you to really settle in, to settle in, to decide that this is the time for you. This is a time for you to be present. This is a time for you to really connect to some really, really fundamental, essential aspects of yourself, because that's my intention of this life, so that it really connects us. It really connects us to that which really matters. It really connects us to our hearts. It really connects us to our bodies. Hello and welcome to all of you here with me live. Welcome to all of you watching the replay. Please let me know if you're watching the replay. Uh, so I hope you don't mind my <laughs> tattoos. <laughs> Uh, which we are just all like, why not? Why not get a little bit playful? Because it doesn't hurt, you know? It doesn't hurt us to get a little bit playful and a little bit out of the seriousness and a little bit out of the minds and into the now. Hello, hello, beautiful ones. So, uh, the, I want to sh share with you, uh, as I said, a really essential part of my journey of becoming who I am today. And lately, I've been, the last couple of years in my work, I've focused a lot on leadership, on supporting my community, supporting my clients to enter into a new paradigm of leadership. And this is just so important for us to choose to be leaders of our lives, for us to really take full responsibility for our lives and then be the guiding lights on this planet. This is just so, so important. And so many of us choose to then go into the journey of entrepreneurship. And why do we want to do that? It's because we want to create a world we actually want to live in. We actually want to empower the paradigm that is really, truly, deeply important to us. But what I notice that is so important is not the success itself, because success can happen in many different ways. But what matters most is how we arrive to the success, to, the, to that which we consider to be success. What matters is the process, is the journey into success. That's where we really see the leadership. And what I find, the piece that is the most essential of it all, is how connected we are to ourselves. Because so often when we connect to certain goals or certain idea of success, and we want to move towards a certain type of life and towards a certain type of reality around us, so often I see leaders forget what really matters and it matters. It matters how we get there. Do we get there through disconnection from our values, through disconnection from our bodies, from our hearts? Do we sometimes override our needs, our bodies, our pleasure, our joy, our fun? Do we override connection with others? Do we override connection with ourselves? Or do we actually stay deeply connected to that which profoundly matters? And the journey of embracing sexuality and embodying our sexual potential, it's, it's the thing that connects us to what really matters. Because when we connect to sexuality, when we connect to our eroticism, we connect to the core of the core of that which makes us human. We unlock 
traumas that are some of the most essential traumas, some of the most difficult traumas, some of the most some of the traumas that then inform our whole personality, our whole entire lives are having sexual nature. And I'm not even talking specifically about sexual abuse, although of course, if that's there and that's far more frequent than we tend to imagine, yeah. But also, even people who never can, uh, had like direct form of sexual abuse also carry a certain degree of sexual wounding, sexual shame, sexual disconnect, because that's what we are taught to do. We live from here upwards in the niceness, in the don't offend others with your wildness, with your too muchness. Be here, be nice, be proper, be polite, don't cry, don't make a big deal, don't, don't dramatize. Yeah, all of that from here upward, just be nice, be sweet. I'm celebrating 100 people here, 101, yes! <laughs> so, uh, when we connect to sexuality, we connect to our power, and our power is linked to the centers that are way below the heart. And connecting to everything that lives below the belly button, this is just, this is the, the, this is the, the game. This is the game because this is where we connect to our pleasure. This is where we connect to our power. This is where we connect to our sexual flow. This is where we connect to our ecstasy. This is where we connect to life, people. And there's nothing more important than that because you don't want to move through life in semi-sleep and disconnect. You don't want to go to the most incredible goals and success in the normal understanding of what is success from disconnect, from, from absence of, of real love in your body, in your life. So I want to share with you my journey and I will share with you a lot of lessons that I learned on this journey. And since then, uh, because I'm going to tell you the story of a very young girl, um, like it was already 13 years ago that my whole sexual spiritual awakening journey started. And for me, these two coincided, my sexual awakening and my spiritual awakening, they happened at the same time. And I believe that I am incredibly blessed that it happened like that. Exactly. Uh, and so now, fast forward 13 years from then, I have worked with thousands and thousands of people all over the planet. I've written a best-selling book. I've created so many programs, so many courses. I've worked privately with so many people. And um, these learnings that I'll be sharing with you, they come not only from my own experience, but also from my wealth of experience with so many people and witnessing people's life, lives transform completely completely, no matter what is their background, no matter how deep they went into spirituality prior to that, no matter how deep they went into trauma work, no matter how deep even they explored their sexuality. Because when I came to that point, I thought I didn't need help with my sexuality. I was like, I'm okay, like, I'm okay. But actually what was happening is that I come from a background of being a lawyer. Uh, so I... Uh, come from that background where people moved from complete disconnect, yeah, disconnected world, like just focusing on the game, just focusing on their their own game without real consideration of what truly matters. So I came from that world, I quit that world, and then I ended up um, one day actually, even while I was uh, there, while I was a part of that world, I remember. Even the year earlier, actually, I was, I was in uni, like I was 19 and I was in uni and I was Googling how to experience orgasms during sex. That was the, the topic that was very interesting to me. All the advice that I found on the internet was, you know, they say you have to move your hips faster. And I tried, it didn't quite work. And then they say you have to wait until you find a partner who actually is capable to do that. That kind of made sense and kind of gave me a little relief. Like, oh, okay, so it's not my responsibility. <laughs> lesson, lesson, lesson here. <laughs> so, um, by the way, if you're loving what you're hearing, please do invite some friends. You can invite some friends to join us. That would be wonderful to expand this party. So 
lesson one. Yeah, it's not about your partner, although Google was trying to tell me that. Then uh, they say, fake it, fake it until you make it. It's, it's, you know, it's another uh, kind of approach. Fake it until you make it and uh, one day you will make it. Mm -hmm. So then I le uh, was left assured that it's about partner. Just, you know, wait until I have the right partner and let's see what happens. So I kept having different partners. But they didn't give me orgasms. If anything, they were just giving me more troubles. <laughs> but not orgasms, not pleasure. And I really saw that, like, okay, maybe I'm just hopeless. And then one day, you know, me being out of my life, being no longer a lawyer, not knowing who I was, I end up in this school where I find out there is a tantra workshop. And I'm invited to this tantra workshop, although I was not looking for it. I was not looking for any help. I was not looking for any Tantra because all I heard about Tantra was, you know, just some weird stuff that I didn't want to be a part of. <laughs> and, but here there is a Tantra workshop and mysteriously I was pulled into it. And there at this Tantra workshop, I hear the teacher saying that, mm, yeah, Tantra is so much more than sexuality, but still what is so beautiful about Tantra is that it's an approach to life, it's a certain lifestyle, it's a certain path that teaches you that you have to connect below the belly button. Yeah, unlike most other spiritual paths that tell you that you should not go into your animal nature, you shouldn't go into your desires, you have to transcend all this nonsense. Tantra is one of the only spiritual paths that says no, 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 that's not how we play. We actually connect to it all, we embrace it all, and we, yes, embrace sexuality, for sure. So, wow, already that sounds pretty fascinating. But then he carries on talking about all sorts of different forms of orgasms, and I was like, what? Orgasms? And I'm remembering myself some years before that Googling. I'm like, oh, okay, so they make a, they actually know here a thing or two. Okay, let me listen. Then he carries on telling that feminine orgasm will never be disconnected from her heart. That a womb, for a woman to have an orgasm, she actually has to be connected to her heart first. I was like, what? To her heart? What do you mean? Like the one that's pumping? No, they didn't mean that one. They meant that the heart, like the, the heart, the, the spiritual heart. The heart in which we can experience universal, unconditional love. That kind of heart they were talking about. So I was like, whoa, okay, that's very interesting. So I approached the teacher and I said, so I have a problem. I, and I was like really hoping no one will hear me because I was extremely ashamed of that. I say, I don't have orgasms. And he was like, yeah. And I was like, like feeling super uncomfortable. I'm like, I'm already like really stretching my edge to talk about this. And then he's just like looking at me. So I take a breath and I say, yeah, like, what do I do? And he looks at me kind of evaluating my body, my shape. And he says, um, you have a good root, root chakra. You shouldn't worry. I'm like, great. And so I left without any like understanding without any hope. I have no idea what he even meant by the strong root chakra. So I left. And then I came to realize that there is such practice as yoni de-armoring. And that instantly was very interesting to me. I was like, yoni de-armoring. De-armoring. So it means that in this, inside of the yoni, there is an armor. Armor, yeah? So like a protection. So yoni creates a protection and when there is a protection, it means there's a blocked energetic flow. And when you have blocked energetic flow in your yoni, you cannot feel a lot in the yoni. There is a sense of numbness. For some, there is pain and if there's pain is actually a actually much better sign when there, you just don't feel anything. Some people say, I just don't feel much, you know, not much is happening. Well, it's not such great news. It just means that you are numb. And that's how most world, most of the world lives. 
in numbness, in disconnect, in dissociation. We dissociate from the body, we dissociate from what matters, we dissociate from our hearts, we dissociate from, from being in touch with life from being deeply in touch with ourselves. And when we address this disconnect directly at the level of the yoni, directly at the level of the genitals, we go directly to the source because sexual energy is the source of all of life. This is how we were created through sexual energy after all. So I hear about this yoni de-armoring, yoni massage, another word. So I go to this lady and I say, okay, I would like to receive that. I'm terrified. I was like, I'm like, I cannot believe I'm doing that. You know, normally, you know, someone like going inside your yoni, putting like their fingers inside. It seems like it, most people can only relate to like when you go to gynecologist. Yeah, you go to gynecologist, they put different strange objects inside of you. But for most women, it doesn't cross their mind that they actually put their own fingers inside the yoni. And oh my God, even someone else who is highly trained practitioner in sacred sexual body work, that even that is an option. Uh oh, yeah. How strange is that? Like, just think with me for a second. Like, how strange is that? That we can allow all sorts of weird objects into our vaginas in the, in the gynecologists who normally have no idea actually about women's bodies, unfortunately, this is a, uh, yeah, a big uh, sadness uh, on this planet that people who work so closely with women's bodies usually have very little understanding of what is a woman's body and that you cannot just shuffle in objects like this. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, so I go to her and I'm like, okay. I'm, I'm ready for that. Let's do this. So she, she says, okay, so lay down. First she massages me. So she says, lay down on your belly. I massage you. I'm like, okay, why is she massaging me? My viewer should go straight to the point. And no, apparently you cannot just go straight to the point. That's also a learning. That's also a point that you cannot go straight to the point because that, that's not how a woman's uh, system functions. You just cannot go and straight away touch the yoni. You just, you just don't do that. That's not how a woman functions. Yeah? A woman is like water. She takes time to warm up. We are so different. Men sexuality and women's sexuality is so different. For men, men are like fire. They ignite instantly from the center. Yeah, you can straight away touch your genitals and the man is very happy. Yeah, For a woman, it's very different. Unless she's all aroused and her whole body is open and vibrant and, and juicy and her heart, remember the heart? Yeah, not the pum pum, but the heart. Her heart is activated. She feels loved completely, first of all, by the woman herself. Only then is the time. So. She is massaging me. I'm, I have no clue at that time why she's doing that, but she's doing that. Okay, well, feels nice, although I'm pretty insecure already. Then she says, turn around. I'm like, okay, I'm turning around. Turning around, and then she keeps massaging me. I'm like, oh my gosh, how long it's gonna be? <laughs> I'm massaging my breasts, massaging my whole body. I'm like, okay, massaging my breasts. She's like, oh yeah, you know. Yeah, do you feel pleasure in your breasts? Like, what pleasure in my breasts? What are we talking about? By the way, another learning. Yes, you can have so much pleasure in your breasts. Actually, even breast orgasms is a thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> At the time, I don't know any of that. So then she starts massaging my yoni. And I did not experience, because I, I thought it will be pleasurable. Because I thought that's, you know, okay, they release the armor, but probably like they do it, like they know what to do. And then I'll just be like super orgasmic, like straight away, like all the doors are just opening and, you know, fairies and butterflies and I'm there like all unleashed and it's so much fun. Oh my gosh. None of that happened in that first session anyway. All I experienced in that session, and it was a two hour long session, 
was pain. Pain, pain and more pain. It was just that. It was just pain. And it was so much pain, I, I was a bit surprised that as a human I can actually feel so much pain. I thought that maybe, because I, I know that women during childbirth have a lot of pain, so I thought maybe that's probably what women who give birth experience. If there are any women who gave birth here, deep bow to you, this is extraordinary, I hope you never forget what a hero you are for giving birth, uh, yeah, especially vaginally, but anyway, you know, carrying a human in your womb is also a heroic activity. So, I'm curious if there are mothers here, by the way, do let me know. So that was the kind of pain that I had there. And then one, at some point, she is telling me, oh my gosh, this is so wonderful, you're having Amrita. Amrita. Side note, Amrita ocalas is female ejaculation. So it happens when it's just waters, you start to release waters from your yoni. It's very different to male ejaculation. It looks different, it tastes different, it smells different, it, everything is different about it. And also scientifically they explain that there is like a, when a gland swells, uh, then when it's stimulated, it can release water. But science has no idea because how much a gland, a tiny little gland can release, how much water it can release is very little. But what a woman can release yeah, uh, actually is incredible. It's incredible. Like women may, may soak the whole bed with how much Amrita they produce. And typically, that produces a lot it comes with a lot with a huge surrender it comes with a huge opening it comes typically with a lot of pleasure but then th at that point i was like oh my gosh like i have zero amount of pleasure right now like i heard about this thing but i could never imagine that it would come like that with no pleasure at all and apparently, that's what, I, and I'm celebrating all the mothers here. Thanks for letting me know. Amazing. You are heroes. So, in that experience, I learned that, yeah, it also can happen through pain. Because when you go into pain, because we are so used to say pain is a bad thing. Yeah, with the mind, we, go like, we like pleasure, we don't like pain. But what my body was teaching me through that was that pain is not such a bad thing. Yeah, The body actually may want to have pain because pain brings us into presence. And all of you mothers will know that when you are giving birth and you're having all this pain, you are super present. There's nothing that can distract you. you, you don't, you're not going to check, oh, what time is it? Oh, how is the weather? You are like there. You don't go with your thoughts. Yeah? You are there. And that's the function of the pain. Yeah, It takes us into what matters. And that's how often we have to receive the alert of the pain in our lives. Things have to crash. Things have to crumble so that we finally become present. So we finally receive this alert. Da -da -da -da. Something is off. Something wants your attention here, and so that that was uh, that's what uh, I was learning right in that moment there. That my body really, really was require requesting my attention, and all that pain was showing me how profoundly disconnected I was. And I was twenty two years old or something, twenty two, twenty three years old. Um, I didn't consider myself being sexually shut down, but yes, I didn't have vaginal orgasms, which is seems to be a norm. Some women even say, it's a myth, you cannot have vaginal orgasms. I'm like, right. <laughs> you can find all sorts of uh, statements to try to justify your experience, but I can tell you, vaginal orgasms exist, very much so. And usually it's this armor that's prevents, preventing us from experiencing it. Armor at the level of the heart, armor at the level of the yoni. So after that, I left her. 
I was like, okay, thanks, bye. And I was different. After that one session, I was different. I went away and I was like, wow, I'm really happy I didn't come here by motorbike. I came there walking and I was very happy that I didn't need to drive because I felt my body, you know, it's like I knew my body is, is this body. I was walking and I felt that my body was way beyond this body. I felt expanded. I felt unleashed. I felt so much energy moving through me. I felt buzzing. I felt sensations I never felt in my life. I felt that I was no longer the one I, I knew myself to be and who I, like, I could not understand it. It was beyond my mind. My mind was going into bye-bye. <laughs> the mind could not comprehend any of that. So then I, I was so spaced out. I was feeling completely high, which uh, before that experience, I had different experiences with different consciousness altering substances. That was next level. None of the drugs, nothing could have ever given me anything close to that. I was high, high on the most incredible substance there is, high on God, because I felt divine vibrating in me. And that expansion was me being kissed by the divine, kissed by grace. Then it was at some point, it was just too much for me to hold. And I went and had some food. When I had some food, I grounded myself. I kind of was like, okay, <laughs> I remember this one. <laughs> then I knew, I knew that I had some, some real gifts to explore and I really had to go into sacred sexuality. That was very clear. <laughs> My yoni taught me that. So um, I'm happy you're, this is landing. Thank you guys for your feedback. So then I was like, okay, I need more. I need to experience this more. And then I went for the second yoni massage and uh, it was nowhere as pain painful as the first one. It was nowhere near. Amazing. After, just after the first one, it was already very different. I was already much more open. Then I experienced more and more and more. And already, like on the third Yoni massage, actually, I was already feeling so much pleasure. A lot more pleasure than pain. And then eventually there was no pain anymore. And what I know, so all of this happened 13 years ago. And since then, what I know is that even for me, like I've been educating about this for 10 years. So like it's been such a big part of my work. I worked with so, so many women. I went so deep into this topic. I've explored things. I've created my own practices. I've really went deep into that because I realized that the yoni for women you can do however much personal development, you can do however much therapy, talk therapy, you can keep exploring your patterns and you can do whatever the heck you want. But if you don't go directly to connect with your yoni, your femininity will never be complete. You will never completely understand what this woman's body is made of and what it is capable of and what it actually is here for. Because you get to understand your feminine essence through connection with the yoni because your yoni is the ultimate re receptacle yeah she receives yeah just with her shape you know that's what happens the yoni receives and that's the feminine nature we are receptive we are magnetic we are not here to go and do effort and push and strive and and you know move forward and penetrate the world with our vision and, and all those things we are here to magnetize, to receive, to alchemize, to, to transcend. Is that you think you are me, but 
Okay, maybe like this would be better. Is it better? It looks still muted. Sound is gone. How about like this? Oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. Better now? Yes, coming back. Okay. Okay, okay. And like this, still good because then I'll put it here. you heard uh, we are here to outline yes ah only that oh my gosh I was saying something so important that's why I got cut <laughs> so we you know so many women ask me uh, but again some people say great oh, okay uh, okay I will hold it like this <laughs> like this better oh my loves volume is low i i think oh i think i think it's because my my book is holding it better <laughs> thank you for your patience well good when I hold it so I'll hold it like this uh, it's not working okay so for some of you it's working for others it's not working now good now good if I hold so okay I'll be holding it okay so where I was is so many women ask me, what about my partner? My partner is not um, not connected energetically. My partner doesn't understand this whole energy stuff. My partner doesn't get this whole masculine, feminine, and all of those things. And what I have to say is that we think that we want a good man. We think that we want a man who understands. At some point, maybe you will want to have a man who uh, not only understands, but he meets you. But what I want to say is that we don't just want that. And we have to get honest about this. What we really want is we want a man who will open us. Who will open us beyond what we know ourselves to be. And that's inevitable, my sisters, because... We know that our feminine nature is here to open and to keep opening and to keep opening and to keep opening. That's what we're here for. And all of life is meant to guide us there, to help us there, to support us with that. Because as we open, the whole universe opens. That's what's really going on. That's what we're really here for. We're here to, to, to support the universe in her opening. And you know, when you want a man like that, when you really understood how precious you are and that you really want a man like that who will hold you and who will open you more, what has to happen? Do you know what? Not you going around and looking for a man who will open you. Not you writing on your Tinder profile, I'm looking for a man who will open me. Not you like saying, oh, no man can open me. None of that. What really has to happen is that you have to be willing 
and are ready to receive all of him. Take it in. Take this in. When you really reach to the point in yourself, when you are ready and willing and available to receive all of him, then real miracles start happening. Because the opening has to come from you first. You cannot wait for this miracle, for this miracle man arrive at your front door and tell you, my, my darling, I will open you. And then he's on the white horse and you are like together on the white horse, all open and ecstatic. It doesn't happen like this. You open first. It's our holy duty and responsibility. It's our holy duty in front of the goddess herself. Because it is through our openness that the goddess reveals herself. It's in our disconnect, in our hustle, in our effort, in our frustration, in our blaming and demanding and our entitlement that the goddess forgets herself. That we forget the grace of the goddess. She is no longer here. She is no longer shining her light. There is no longer love. There is no longer connection. But that's all we are yearning for. What are we doing? So it's our job. It's our job. With no one to blame. No one to expect this from. It's our job. And it is scary. I totally get it. And it's exactly the work that happens at the level of the yoni. Because the yoni will teach you that more than any, any, any other experience of your life. Because she is the one who teaches you how to open. Because that's her nature. She yearns to open. She yearns to blossom. She has so many gifts. She teaches you how to be magnetic. He, she teaches you how to feel attractive no matter your age. And actually, women who connect to their yonis, really, to their sexuality, to their femininities in their 60s are much more beautiful than women in their 20s who are running around thinking that it's their looks that get them all they want. Their real femininity is about shining from inside out inside out, which means connection to your deepest depth. And your deepest depth you will never connect to unless you connect to your sacred portal, your yoni. <sighs> so it's an emotional space and I, and I honor you for feeling all these emotions. I want to try to put this in here because it's a bit hard for to hold it. I'm still it. gets emotional because there are so many emotions connected to so many emotions that are not perfect connected. Okay, perfect. Okay. So I understand that so that the things are emotional when you hear me speak like that. If you really let yourself feel these things, you will feel emotional. And that's exactly because the yoni is storing all the emotions. Anything that's unaddressed, unprocessed, unacknowledged, it's all stored in your yoni. And that's what I've come to realize, you know, in the story that I'm uh, sharing with you, it's um, like I was disconnected completely. Now, and all over these years, I've connected so profoundly. I've studied my yoni, every nook and cranny of my yoni, I know. And still, at times, I disconnect. And still, I come back to the practices. And still, I reconnect. And still, I spiral up and up and up. And I keep finding new depth of myself. There's never such thing that, well, I've explored it all. Well, I've healed it all. There's no such thing. And don't limit yourself thinking that you have that thing, that you've arrived to this perfect, accomplished place. That's not what it's about. It's a continuous state of awe for the goddess. 
It's a continuous desire to keep meeting the goddess in the deepest and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper way. This state of awe, of honor, of adoration for life and how life moves in you. That's the feminine. This radiance from inside out because you remember how loved you are. You remember how much love there is of the goddess within you. How you can tap into the love of the goddess in your heart. How you expressing your heart is the goddess loving us all back home. That's the power of the woman. We have to remember that. So the Yoni teaches us about magnetism. She also teaches you about receptivity. She, she teaches you how to really receive a man that you want to receive. She teaches you about your beauty, your real attractiveness. And the practice is to be connected moment by moment. The practice is to keep dropping down below your belly button. The practice is practicing yoni de armoring. And the yoni de armoring is something that you can do with a practitioner. And big news, I'm back to offering it, although I had some years off of it. But now during my VAP retreats, it's a possibility. But also, there is a way to work on your yoni by yourself. And how you do it is with your fingers, with a crystal wand. And there are specific ways how you can explore her. And the best way to do it is being guided. Being guided and being led and being really like held as you go there. Because it will be very, very, very emotional. Because all the emotions that you didn't want to feel, all the feelings that you've repressed, that you didn't acknowledge, that you didn't address, they are all there. They are all there, stored in the yoni, and you have such a direct portal to unblock everything that's been blocked, everything that's been armored. This is a direct portal, the yoni. So, beloveds, um, connection doesn't happen only via sexual experiences, not at all. It's your moment by moment connection to your body to your heart yeah and then through the sexual exploration direct sexual exploration you speed things up and it has to happen in the moment when you are ready for it it should never be forced it should never be pushed and most people have no idea how to work neither with the yoni egg nor with the yoni ones they just approach it as, as another masculine approach to life through effort through just okay quick quick let's do it now like, this is not the way. And um, I've created a course where I am holding this space for you. Some of you who are here, you're already part of it. Uh, it's a deep feminine. And it starts on Friday. And we have such extraordinary work there. Such extraordinary work. Because you're going to be held in such a sacred space with so much love, with so much tenderness, because I have all of that in me for this work, because I've held so many women in this tender, sacred space in them. And there's never space for forcing, for pushing, for, for jumping before ahead of yourself. When we work with the feminine body, it's all about you coming back to love. Really, 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 really. So this is an extraordinary experience that's coming up on Friday, 11.11, we begin. I don't even know how many people have joined, over 50 women, I believe by now, are a part of it. And it would be extraordinary for you to offer that to yourself. We have eight weeks, and every week we have one meeting. There will also be opportunities to ask me questions. We'll have Telegram group for extra intimacy and connection with women. And every week, every Friday, we'll be meeting and going in deep. Segment by segment, aspect by aspect of our femininity, we are going to be opening so deeply. And we're going to be opening the yoni so deeply and she will blossom and you will see your magnetism in hands and you will feel your beauty like never before no matter how old you are you will feel connection with with the opposite sex with men in a very different way but all of this is just a bonus 
because what's the most important thing about it is that your sexuality is something that connects you to ecstasy of existence. Your sexuality is something that offers you direct portal to the divine. And that's really what matters here. Because you connect to yourself beyond who you've taken yourself to be. You connect with your highest self. You connect to your divinity. And all of that happens through this direct contact with the body, with the yoni. So, voila! You can find more details at the link in my bio. Um, if you have any questions, welcome to ask me. The price will go up on Friday when we begin. You can also get an upgrade if you want to have one-on-one -on -one work with me. Normally, I don't offer one-on-one -on -one sessions. I only work with people in long, long-term containers. But during this uh, course, I decided to offer two sessions. You can uh, upgrade to have two sessions one-on-one -on -one with me if you want to be held, if you want to have extra holding for your journey. So it's 1,222 at the moment. Uh, and there are payment plans also. Let me see if you have any questions here. Some people, um, a pelvic floor trigger points, yoni armor. No, the trigger points are not the armor. The armor will ex be expressed in different ways. The armor is expressed both physically as the points of pain or numbness and it will also be expressed emotionally in places where you are emotionally numb or you don't feel certain things emotionally or you you've created a a contraction emotionally and that will be reflected as physical tension in the yoni that's how amazing she is and we have to treat her as that um Uh, do you wake your yoni only through the relation with the other? No, as I said, no. You, you also do it directly yourself. Okay, so let me see. There was also someone, uh, someone asking about men. Uh, for men, I have another course which is called Activated Men. And that's also a beautiful, beautiful program for men, specifically working on sexual empowerment for men. If the program works for virgins, by all means, absolutely, yeah. And the classes will be recorded, and you will be having some, uh, you will having access to recordings, and you will be repeating some of the recordings to keep deepening into the practices before we go into the next week. Because each practice will be so potent, like you can spend like months and months just doing one of the practices, and you will have every week practices. Uh, so when you cannot uh, join live, you will have recordings. Okay, my loves. So voila. Out of the mind and into our essence we go. I invite you on this journey with me and uh, the whole world will benefit. You will see that it's your greatest service. When you do that, it's not selfish. You do that as your greatest service because a woman who is radiant, whose heart is awakened, who is shining from inside out. She is the conduit for the grace of the goddess. And we are starving for her medicine. We are starving for her. We are in love with her. And it's through you, my sister, that she is revealed. I love you. Have a beautiful rest of your day.